Tirza. Thank you for joining us today. Please pay close attention as I guide you through the announcements. Let's get started. Join us in person every Sunday morning, 8.30 a.m. for a continental breakfast and 10 a.m. for life application lessons hosted by Faith Tabernacle Sunday School. Enjoy fellowship with us as we celebrate birthdays the last Sunday of each month. Speaking of birthdays, wishing everyone who has a birthday in February happy birthday. May it be a day to remember. If you're looking for a midweek word, searching for answers to questions you may have, or just desiring to spend a little more time in prayer, connect with us at 7 p.m. in person or via live streaming on YouTube or our website for Re-Up Wednesdays, where you can replenish with a midweek word every first and second Wednesday. Rethink during our question and answer sessions every third and fifth Wednesday and recharge with prayer every fourth Wednesday. Looking to sow a seed? Here are the three ways you can give. For your convenience, you can scan the QR codes available on your screen to access your desired payment option. We thank you for being a blessing and sowing into our ministry. Growing in the Lord is essential. Engage with our youth and young adults as they learn and develop in the things of the Lord. More information for events, outings, and youth services can be found on our website, www.fthcphilly.com. Want to catch up on sermons and stay current on Faith Tabernacle events? Follow us on social media. Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube handles can be found on your screen. Friend, follow, and subscribe.
Let the people of God stand all over the house. Hallelujah. I'm asking that you would move up. Just, just a few of us. And we're all scattered about. Move up. I, I, I would like no one to be sitting behind our sister Rosalie on this side. And I, on this side, uh, the room the, the behind my husband, Clarence. Come and move up. Everybody move up, move up. Move up. Move up. Hi, Neve. Move up, baby. Move up. Thank you. This is actually a request from our pastor that everybody move up. So we can all feel the fire, right? When you're so scattered, the fire got to go too far. So when you're all together, you can feel the fire together. Amen. Thank you very much. We're going to be reading the word of God. In 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, everyone standing and honoring the word of God. Starting at the 23rd verse. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This, is, this cup is is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord is an, in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks it unworthy, in an un unworthy manner, eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. And the 30th verse, for this reason, many are weak and sick among you and many sleep. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for this, this day that we, we celebrate and remember who you are and what you did. We thank you, Lord God, for dying on the cross for us, shedding your blood, Lord, that, oh God, we know that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And we thank you for it, Lord God, shedding the blood. Jesus, we give you glory and honor today. We worship you in spirit and truth. We give you what you are worthy of.
is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. Oh, see how great. Oh, see how great. How great. How great. How great is our God. How great. How great. How great. How great. Nobody great. Nobody great. Nobody great. 
you're going through. I don't care what you've gone through. I don't care what pain you've had. I don't care what it is. God will never leave us. He'll never leave us. He said his very name says he is with us. He's with us. He's with us. Sometimes we forget who we believe. Sometimes we forget who we serve. But the God of gods and the Lord of lords, the King of kings, he is with us. He'll never leave us. And whatever your problems are, whatever the situations are in your life, God, remember, I'm speaking to somebody today. Remember, God is with you. Amen, amen. I bless the Lord for the word that's going to come forth today. A woman of God that can preach the word. A woman of God that can teach the word. A woman of God that lives the word. And whoever, who, who else would you want to stand before you other than someone that lives and teaches and preach the word of God? And I thank God for this woman because she is such... She has such an anointing and such a calling on her life. She's so gifted. I don't even know if she realizes how gifted she is. But I thank God for her. I thank God for her. Our sister Adeline Coleman. She's going to bring forth the word today. Keep in prayer. Stay in prayer for her today. And you know what? Let me just say this. Live stream, I love you. Thank you for joining us. Let me just say this. When... I noticed when I was praying after I prayed and I was saying thank you Jesus and y'all was looking at me like I was crazy like y'all didn't know who I was talking about when we are praising the Lord it's better if we do it corporately it's more power in it corporately don't stand up here looking at me like y'all don't know Jesus it ain't about me it's about the God that you serve. And when we're praising God, we praise God together. We praise God together. Stand on your feet all over this house and praise God together. Hallelujah. people 
people will be delivered as a result of the word of God that is preached in this house. Oh God, some may hear it today and some may hear it later in the week and some may hear it way down the road but it is still your word and it still carries power and it will still accomplish what you sent it forth to accomplish and so we give you praise in Jesus name hallelujah you may be seated let me say that I love the Lord with all my heart no joke about it I am in love and um, I'm loving him more every day the songwriter said, sweeter as the days go by. Jesus' love is sweeter as the days go by. And um, I haven't heard Sister Renee sing it for a minute. But the beginning of it says, when I first fell in love with Jesus and I gave him all my heart, I never knew I could love him more than I did right at the start. But as I look back over the mountains and the valleys, the hills where I've been, oh, I love him so much more. Ah, my God, I love him so much more than I did back then. I fell in love with him before I knew him good. <laughs> I had just heard about him, but I felt in love with him. And now every day with Jesus. Is sweeter than the day before. And I keep falling in love with him over and over and over again. He gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Oh, this love between the Lord and I, I keep falling in love with him. And you know what? He never ceases to amaze me. <sighs> I thank God for the present place I am right now. And the feeling that I have right now, because I was a little bit upset. Uh, upset even is a good word. I was just a little bit nervous, a little bit something. Because all the stuff that I felt I had written down past the Furby. And I tried to transfer it from one device to another device, and it all disappeared. I said, oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm trying to find it, Deborah, and I couldn't find it. But here's what I love about God. When he puts a word in your heart and you go over the word that he put in your heart, it makes it okay. And Sister Nate told me it's okay. You, you don't even use those notes anyhow. I'm like, yeah, but I feel I'm like Linus with the blanket. <laughs> I just feel more comfortable when I have it and the Lord was letting me know, you going to trust me or not? I said, yes, sir. And then y'all began to sing, if my God is for us. He said, you hear me? I said, yes, sir. Yeah. Then who can stand against it? And I said, okay. And y'all just kept on ministering to me. So I just want to say thank you <laughs> for allowing the Lord to use you to minister to me. So now I can minister to you and I feel comfortable. I don't like being uncomfortable. Won't he do it? <laughs> Yeah, you will. Today is Communion Sunday. And it concerns me somewhat that sometimes you do things so often until you just take it for granted. You get so used to it. And I am impressed to share with you, never ever get so common and so used to this service. When first Sunday rolls around or any time, because we did it just a couple, a week ago, Thursday night, never take communion lightly because it means something. Out of all of the things we do in church, two things, two ordinances are, are the very most important things we do, and that's baptism and the Lord's Supper. And yet, I know some denominations put some other things in there. And one of the other things they put in there, one denomination puts in there is marriage. And most people, when they get ready to get married, they make all kind of preparation. They prepare, they dress different on their wedding than they do any other day. People, okay, I, just let me get this out of my system, okay? People.
people who don't be wear, believe in wearing suits who dress up and put on a tux on their wedding day. You can look like a bum any other day, but on your wedding day, you be sharp as a tack. Not only do you dress up, you spend more money for your wedding than you do anything. You spend a whole lot of money for just an hour or so. You spend money for people to come and sit down and eat at your expense. And you pay a lot of money for just one plate of food. And it'll last over and over and over and over and over again. And y'all will dance the night away. But when it comes to the important things of the church, we just come and, mm, it's a crack in the music. Mm. Something seemed kind of off with that. Maybe, maybe the way I'm explaining it to you, you never thought about it like that. But that's how it came to me. How is it so important? All of these things we do, we, we, whatever it is you do, it seems to be more important and you take more preparation and you put more thought than you do when it comes to the Lord's Supper. I want to change that mindset. I want to make you think about God's Supper a little bit different. So I'm going to talk to y'all. I know I like my outlines and this is, one of the reasons why I like outlines, because when I outline it, nay, most of the time, it may be about three points, and I can remember where I'm going. If I didn't remember the outline, then I probably would have been a little bit more upset. <laughs> y'all stop playing with y'all. But I want to talk to you. I'm going to give you three things about this Lord's Supper. And I want to look at the Lord's Supper, past, present, and future. But I want to mix up the order a little bit, and I want to talk about the past reflection of communion, the future revelation of communion, and the present recognition. Y'all want me to say it again? Look on YouTube. Never mind. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. The past reflection of communion the future revelation of communion, and the present recognition of communion. The past reflection of commun communion, go with me to Luke chapter 22, verse 19. And you can find the same kind of thing repeated in 1 Corinthians 11, 24 and 26. So do you mind if I just read the one out of 1 Corinthians and y'all can look up Luke later? 1 Corinthians 11, 24, and it says, And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, this do as often, whoo, Jesus, thank you, as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he come. I'm going to tell you a word that caught me. It says, in the same manner he took the cup, verse 25, saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. This do. No question about it. I know some people who won't take communion. I ain't going to beat nobody, but I'm just going to tell the truth. They won't take communion. But here he said, do it. You're supposed to take communion. And you're supposed to take it often. He says, as often as, I don't know how often it is for some people, but for us generally, it's once a month. But he said, this do. To me, that sounds like a command. There is no reason, and, and hear me out before you cut me off, for you not to take communion. And you say you say. I understand later in this chapter that it says, if you do it in an unworthy manner, not discerning the Lord's body, he said, you drink damnation to yourself. So some people, oh, okay. 
okay, I'm coming for you. Some people know they ain't living right, so they think I'm going to get away because I'm not going to take communion. <laughs> well, you can't do that because now you're in disobedience. Not only did you sin doing whatever it is you did, but now you're disobeying God because you're not taking his communion. It made me think about a young man who proposed to me. <laughs> and I said no. Hey, well, he wasn't really proposing marriage. He was proposing something else. He wasn't interested in marriage. He was just interested in getting somewhere that he wasn't going to get. And then had another to say to me, well, if I got you pregnant, I would marry you. And I'm like, and that sounds stupid. Number one, I would be sinning for you to. And then I would sin again to marry you. So you're asking me to give up all of the things that I know about God and love about God and sin with you and be guilty twice. The word of God told me I'm not supposed to do that. And then he told me I'm not supposed to be unequally yoked. No. Now some of y'all, mm, my God. Okay, live stream people, maybe y'all are watching. There's some young folks in here too. Some of y'all scared to say no. I had a young girl one time who told me she didn't want to say no to the young boy who asked her. And they both were in the church. Uh-huh. Because she didn't want to lose him. And if she didn't, some other woman would. And so she decided to give in. And because she gave in, exactly what happens after nine months of giving in happened. And he was nice enough to marry her. And then after marrying her, he divorced her. So what did you gain? Pretty baby that you got to take care of for 21 years and fight and fuss with him for child support. Oh, okay. <sighs> Do y'all understand where I'm coming from? <sighs> and here the Lord is saying to us, "Do this." And you're saying, "I don't want to do it because I'm not living right." Then stop living wrong and live right. The Lord didn't tell you that he wouldn't be there to help you. There's no excuse to not take communion and you call yourself a child of God and you in love with God. What have you done so horribly that you think God won't forgive you? You need to get forgiven and don't wait to communion. Okay, Beth Ann. Don't wait to communion Sunday and sit in the pew and pray for forgiveness. Prepare yourself for communion before the first Sunday rolls around. Live in communion with God every day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and all day Saturday. Live in communion with God. Keep short accounts with God. Talk to God every day. My daddy told me it's a whole lot easier to say, Lord, help me, than Lord, forgive me. When stuff comes up, Lord, help me. And he'll be right there. Peter was walking on the water. He said, Lord, save me when he began to sink. And Jesus was right there. Whenever you find yourself tempted to sin, this is a song I learned as a kid. It said, yield not to temptation. For yielding is sin. It's not sin to be tempted. It's sin when you yield to it. He says, but each victory will help you. When, oh my God, when you get victory over this one, God will give you a victory over the next one. See, so each victory will help you, some other to win. Fight manfully onward, strong passion subdue. I mean, push him down. When the devil raises up and tries to get you to do something, you got to push him down. We talked about it before. You got to bring every thought into captivity. Yes, the devil comes. Yes, he plants thoughts in your mind. Yes, he rises up in your flesh. Yes, he does all of that. But you bring it into captivity by the power of the Holy Ghost and you pull it down. You don't let the devil rule in your life. 
stop you from remembering by taking communion because you sin. If you just, I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying that I ain't never sinned. I just don't let sin have dominion. I don't let sin rule. When it pops his head up, I slap it. He said, oh, you can do so-and-so? <clears throat> nope, that ain't it. Sometimes I'm by myself, I say, mm, no, God, that ain't, that ain't right. That's not the right thought. I bring that thought into captivity. I will not think that. Do y'all think the devil playing? He ain't playing. Renee, he has come to me sometime when I'm driving and tell me stupid stuff, Sister Furby. Tell me stuff like wrecking my car while I'm in it. I'm like, you devil. I ain't wrecking this car. I ain't killing myself today. So when I leave my house, I say, God, I pray in the name of Jesus, don't let me hit nobody and don't let nobody hit me. When my son walks out, I say, the Lord bless you and keep you. He said, the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. I say, that the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. He left the other morning early before I got to see him. And he said, text me, said, I'm gone. I texted him back, said, the Lord bless you and keep you. You got to constantly, don't allow the, if you leave, if you leave a crack for the devil, he'll push the door open. The minute he starts talking, mm, the minute he starts talking, shut the door. No, I, don't, I didn't mean to leave that open. Listen, y'all know my grandbaby. So I have a basement door in my kitchen. And um, sometimes you close it, but it don't latch good. Zion, I walk around the kitchen, and he see that door a little bit open. He sneaks his hand inside and open it all the way. So if I'm in the living room and he walks in the kitchen, I'm like, is the door closed? I got a bathroom in the back. I'm, is the bathroom door closed? Because if you don't get to Zion quick, he'll be in the toilet. I said, then I got to get up and start running, Sister Furby. And I push the door closed. Sometimes he's right there. Red, I, mm -mm. I close the door. Go in the bathroom and close that door. Huh. My husband told you, we have to constantly keep, and that's how I want you to be with the devil. Constantly be on your watch. Because he's not playing with us. He's not playing with us. I know everybody's talking about that thing that happened the other day. And I was sitting on my couch with the baby. He was asleep. And my whole sofa shook. I said, oh my God. I thought something was going on in my basement. But I didn't want to wake the baby up to go in the basement and see what was happening. So then I said, well, maybe that's um, a truck going down the street. And my couch is still, mm -hmm. I said, Jesus, have mercy. And I heard, <laughs> I want to say the voice of God, but I heard in my spirit, it's an earthquake. I said, oh, my God. So I grabbed the baby tight, and I said, okay, Jesus. And we sat there like this until it stopped shaking. <laughs> I was trying to find my phone to find the news. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what I heard for real. You need the news to confirm what I said? <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't find it on the news. But then back he called me. He said, Mommy, did you feel that? I said, yeah, baby. He says, how is that? I said, I ain't asleep. We all right. I'm going to tell you something. The devil will come at you just as quick as that. And if you had not prayed up, I'm not talking about in your own spirit strength your own flesh but praying in the Holy Ghost constantly that devil will sneak up on you and he'll shake you real good and you won't hardly know what happened to you and before you can say oh Lord help me you done fell into something whenever you find yourself in the midst of a test a trial a tribulation cry out to God say help me Jesus even if you slip one foot, say, help me. Peter didn't say, help me until he was down in the water. Then he said, help me. You better cry out to God and ask him to help you so that you can partake of his supper. The reflection of, commun of communion 
is to remind us what he went through for us. He says, as often as you do it, you remember me. You show forth my death. We talked the other Thursday night, not only about the remission of your sins by the blood, oh Jesus, help me, but by the healing of your body by the bread. When you read it in Luke, he said, take this mm, is my body that's broken for you. I watched, I don't even know what film it was, but they was talking about the crucifixion of Jesus. Somebody mentioned the passion of the Christ. And there were two types of scourgings. One was what the Jews did. The Jews wouldn't beat you 40 times. They would stop at 39. The Romans didn't have a stop. And Jesus, when he was scourged by Pilate's officers, was a Roman scourging. It wasn't just 39 stripes. His body was broken for every kind of disease that there is. There is no diagnosis, my God. Excuse me. There is no diagnosis that the doctor can give you that Jesus can heal. I don't care what they call it. If they can name it, Jesus can heal it. Oh, woo. Jesus died for AIDS before they even knew there was AIDS. Jesus stripes cured cancer before the doctors knew anything about cancer. My God. We just don't take communion seriously. We believe. Uh, I, I, I feel like I need to put out a disclaimer, but I don't want to. But I, I, I think I, I'm going to. Because the will of God is the will of God. And I got that. But some of us don't even try to ask God for healing. We just accept whatever the doctor say and take all the medicine he tell us to take and do whatever he tell us to do. And sometimes the medicine itself ain't working right. I ain't going to call my name, but I told somebody a pill that they was taking. I said, you swelling up and that pill will make you swell. When she checked with one of the doctors, the doctor said, yeah, that pill will make you swell. She checked with the swell pharmacist, the pharmacist said, yeah, that pill will make you swell. I worked in nursing a long time, 50 years. I don't know everything, but I've seen a whole lot of stuff in 50 years. And the stuff that I've seen with the gift of the Holy Ghost and revelation knowledge, some things I know. I take medicine. Sure do. Try to take it right, but I don't always. But when the doctor told me, take this because you have type 2 diabetes, I said, I'll take that, but I ain't going to take it forever. And my husband looked at some, at so, many, so many bottles of pills up there. He said, why you got all this? <laughs> bottles. Okay. No. You think I'm going to just dope myself up on all this stuff? No, I'm not. By the power of God, I'll discipline what I eat. And discipline how much sleep I get. And discipline my exercise routine. And pray God for the healing of my body. But don't tell me I got to listen to the doctor more than I listen to God. And I ain't telling nobody don't take your medicine or don't listen to your doctor. Judge yourself what you're going to do. But I think I would rather trust God. I'll take the medicine and pray. Because sometimes huh, they're trying to get better. But sometimes they give you medication and they think they said one thing and the pharmacist think they said something else and you got the wrong medicine. 
It, ha it has happened. Sometimes you go in for surgery, they put to cut off your right foot, and they cut off the left. Don't tell me it don't happen. I know it happened. You putting your hand, your, your trust, and I'm not, please hear me good. Don't go stop taking it to the bathroom and say, I'm not going to take medicine. I did not say that. I'm telling you to trust God, yes. Believe God, yes. And if your faith ain't there, you better not try it. You keep taking the medicine and pray for manifestation and for revelation. And you can't get revelation knowledge from God if you ain't listening to God and you ain't praying, you ain't reading your word, you ain't living for God. Don't you dare think you're going to live any kind of way you want to live and then come to God and God's going to do everything for you. Y'all going to stop cheapening grace. I know God has grace. Grace is unmerited favor. But you can't do everything you want to do when you want to do it, how you want to do it, and then come to God and say, but heal me. When we look back on the past reflection, we see what Jesus went through. So when I come to take this body and this blood, I remember Jesus was wounded for my transgressions. I don't just see it as a little grape juice and a wafer. I understand there's, can I give you two big words? There's a word called transubstantiation and consubstantiation. Transubstantiation says when you come and take the body and blood of the Lord, it miraculously changes into the real body. <laughs> okay. Whew. Can I be comical for a minute? Seemed like to me all these people that took, took communion for all these years, that his body would be gone by now. <laughs> and all of the blood would have been dried. <laughs> Drunk, what else will I say? So some, I'm not, I don't want to pick at people because they believe what they believe. But it just seemed comical to me. So when you look in Luke, he says, this is my body. So here's what people say. Jesus said, this is. He didn't say this represents or this symbolizes. He said, this is my body. I said, okay. Follow that same train of thought. And Jesus said, destroy this temple and I raise it in three days. Was you talking about brick and mortar or was you talking about his body? Jesus said, I am the door. Did he literally become a door? When he said, I am the bread of life, did he literally become a bread? Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Don't let people trick you because they want to try to interpret scripture for you when you got the Holy Ghost in you and you know better than that. Stop being duped by the devil and make you, oh, I don't know what to believe because it's so confusing. It ain't confusing a lick. It's only confusing if you don't want to believe the truth. When Jesus sat at that table with those disciples on the Last Supper, he said, this is my body that's broken for you. He was sitting there. He was breaking bread. He didn't break an arm or a toe. Come on, y'all. Use your Holy Ghost good sense. This is my body that's broken for you. And after he did that, he washed their feet. He went out in the garden. He got beaten. Come on. Do you understand what I'm saying? Some people tell you stuff, and y'all don't even sit down and think about it good. You just, just gullible. Stop being so gullible. And I'm not saying that to dismiss anybody because if that's the way they understand, that's the way they understand. But that doesn't mean you got to understand it that way. We're going to teach the truth up in here. We're not going to give you no fancy fables, no fairy tales, no half truths. We're going to give you the true word of God, the past reflection. Now I want you to look at the future revelation and hope 
I can stay calm. Because the future revelation, go to Matthew chapter 26. In Matthew chapter 26, I had a tissue there. I must have took it out. Mm, Ain't that wonderful what I did? But I'm going to tell you, in essence, what he says. When he's giving them to drink, he says, I will not drink this again with you till I drink it new in my Father's kingdom. Did y'all get there? 22, what did I say? 26, 29. But I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. When I come, oh Jesus, to take communion, I got to not only remember the past, but I got to look toward the future. And one day, ha, I'm going to sit at the communion table. I'm going to be sitting there with Jesus himself. I'm going to drink at the marriage supper of the Lamb. I'm looking forward to the day when my body will be resurrected and I'll be in the presence of God and I'll be drinking the bread and eating the bread and drinking the wine at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Oh, God. My God. When you come and take communion, you got to remember, this is, just, this is just a foreshadowing of one day. One day. One day, the Lord going to return. He my must die. Oh, Jesus. One day, Jesus is coming back. And the Thessalonians tell us, and one day, the dead in Christ are going to rise. Listen to what he said about the return. He says, there's going to be a trumpet. I heard Reverend Jeremiah say, I don't know what that trumpet sound is going to sound like. Yea, God. But the trumpet is going to sound with the voice of an archangel and the sound of many waters. And the dead in Christ are going to hear the sound of the trumpet. I might die before that day come. But whenever that day come, nay, you can put me six feet under and you can put dirt all over me. But I'm going to hear the sound of a trumpet. Hey! He said, then the dead in Christ. Not the unsaved, but the dead in Christ. I ain't got time for the devil to be tricking me out of communion. Making me sin so that I don't feel worthy to take communion. He is a liar. Because when I come and take communion, I take it in anticipation that I'm going to drink this again. But when I drink it new, I'm going to drink it in the kingdom of heaven. I got to read something. Y'all forgive me. I didn't mean to take this much time. That's why I lost my notes. that, That must be why I lost my notes. Look at Revelation chapter 19. I got to read a little bit. Do y'all mind if I read a little bit? (laughs) Thank you, Bishop. In Revelation chapter 19, can I read verse 9? Then he said to me, write, blessed are those who are called (laughs) to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of God. I fell at his feet. I worshiped him. That was an angel. I worshiped him. And the angel said, see that you don't do that. I'm your fellow servant. And of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus, worship God. We don't worship angels. We worship God. We don't worship the communion. We worship God. Look, can I tell y'all something real quick? Taking this communion ain't going to save you. You might as well go to the store and get you a grape soda and a, and a cookie. This communion is not going to save you. And this communion is not going to heal you. 
worship God. It is the blood of Jesus that saves us. And it's his broken body, not his literal broken limbs, because none of his bones were broken. Mm -hmm. But his broken body that heals you. He took the stripes for you and every disease that's among men. Jesus already paid the price for it. Peter said, by his stripes, I was healed. I got a new understanding of how to walk in faith and believing. My knees will hurt me so bad coming up the steps, but I said, mm. I said, knees, you might as well stop hurting because Jesus already healed me. I, co I confess already that I'm healed. Sister Furby, I got in the bed and went to get out and my back wanted to, I said, oh, no, 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 no. You don't move from my knee to my back. You a liar. You a liar in my knees and you a liar in my back. I prayed, I plead the blood of Jesus. I'm already healed. He healed me. Just like he saved me, he healed me. I know I got to walk in it until manifestation come, but I'm determined to walk in it. I'm determined I'm going to walk in it. I don't believe Jesus gave me an understanding for me to keep doing the same old thing that I've been doing. I believe he gave me an understanding for me to do different. Okay, let me, let, me, let me come back here. <laughs> my God. He said in verse 10, he said, I saw in my face, I worship God, right? Verse 11. Now I saw heaven open and behold, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's right. And behold, a white horse. He that sat on him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness, he judged and made war. His eyes were like flames of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had the name written, and no one knew except himself. Let me skip down to verse 15. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp, a sharp sword, that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule with them on with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness of God the wrath of almighty God. And he has on his robe and on his thigh mm, a name. <laughs> Woo. Lord Jesus, I'm going to stop you. I, I got to get down here again. Hold on a minute. Let me come down here. When he says, this is the marriage supper of the lamb. I could read some more, but I, I want to stop. Where I want to stop at? Yeah. I want to go back to, to verse 9. And he said to me, right. Those who are called to the marriage supper. Those who are called to the marriage supper. Can I back up a little bit more? He said, praise God, all you servants of those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude. That's verse 6. And the sound of many waters and the sound of mighty thunderings saying, hallelujah, yeah. <laughs> for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. Why? For the marriage of the lamb has come. That's my future revelation. When I come to take communion, I remember the past, but there's a future revelation. I'm going to drink it again. Jesus says, I'm drinking this with you guys right here, but the day going to come, and I'm going to drink it new. Watch me for a minute. Because when Thessalonians, I was telling you about when Jesus returns, there's a return, then there's a resurrection, and he says the dead in Christ are going to rise first. Then there's a reunion. He says, and all those who are alive and remain. When I read this, I'm sorry. I said, Mommy, Daddy, here I come. Mickey, here I come. We can go on, can't we? Sister Gordy, here we come. Brother Dargan, 
Here we come. Ooh. If I, I, I have to stop naming them, don't I? There's going to be a great reunion. And somebody said, you can't crown him till I get there. And when the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. Because we're going to sit down at the table. And we're going to say howdy, howdy, and never goodbye. I won't have to say bye no more to my mom or my dad. You won't say bye anymore to your loved one that knew the Lord. He said, because the dead in Christ, we're going to get up first. Then those of us who are alive and remain, we'll be caught up to meet them. So shall we ever be with the Lord. We got some place to go. So when I come, when I come to take communion, I come thanking God for my salvation. I come thanking him for my healing. I come thanking him because I'm on my way to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And one day I'm going to sit in heaven and drink new wine and new bread with Jesus himself. And I'll be able to see what the people saw on the road to Emmaus when they break bread together. And they looked at Jesus and he saw the nail prints in his hand. I'm going to be able to do what Thomas did every day. I'm going to touch the nail prints in his hand. I'm going to be able to put my head in his side. I'm going to be able to see for myself the wounds in his feet. Communion means something to me. Communion just ain't no little piece of wafer. Communion ain't no little teeny glass of grape juice. Communion for me means I remember his death and his burial. It means that I look forward to the reunion. And then it means this. Uh, I got to quit. It means the present recognition. Go with me to St. John chapter 6. And we're going to close with this one. I love St. John chapter 6. St. John chapter 6 is all about Jesus' declaration. He taught by parable, but he also taught by discourse. And some people call this the bread of life discourse. I pray to God today that after I'm done with this message, you'll never see communion like you ever saw it before. Communion will mean a whole different thing to you. That's my prayer. Listen to what Jesus says. <laughs> it's kind of funny, isn't it? He's talking to them. And in verse 48, he says, I am the bread of life. Let me give you a little bit of background. Jesus had fed 5,000 people. And after he fed them, 5,000 men, not counting women and children. And after he fed them, they collected 12 baskets. Jesus gets in the boat and he's going away. And when he talked to the disciples, they think he's mad at them because they ain't bring no food. <laughs> yeah, to me, that's funny. Why would Jesus be waiting for y'all to bring food? When he just made the food that he wanted. Two fish and five loaves of bread, and he makes enough fish and bread for 5,000 people. Y'all wasn't thinking. He ain't hardly talking to y'all about no bread. But they didn't understand. So he goes on to talk to them about this bread, and he gets with these other Jewish leaders, and he talks to them about the real manna. The Pharisees said, oh, we got manna. Our fathers ate manna from heaven. Jesus, that wasn't the real bread. <laughs> Your fathers ate manna. Mm. When they ate manna, it wouldn't even last overnight. They went out to get the manna. They put it in the pot. They was only supposed to get enough for that day. And if they got more than what they were supposed to get, the next day, it had worms in it. On, on, on Friday night when they went out to get it, they had to save enough for the Sabbath. Because they couldn't do any work on the Sabbath. So they had to wait to get more. But that, that it took on Friday lasted Friday and Saturday and no worms came in. What's the difference between Thursday and Saturday? The Sabbath was the rest of God. He said, you don't do no work on it. Now, we, we get into something else later. I ain't going to go through that now. Ask me later. But here, he said, you think that was bread from heaven that developed worms? 
I'm the true bread. I'm the bread of life. And then listen to what he says. He says, I am the living bread. I came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Jew said, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said, I say unto you most assuredly, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. They thought Jesus was trying to turn them into cannibals. Eat your flesh and drink your blood. And the Bible goes on to say, and many of them turned away and would walk with him no more. But Jesus wasn't talking about his literal body and his blood. He was saying to them, you got to have communion with me. You got to be one with me. So here's what I want to say to you. When you come to take this communion, you got to remember, you're one with the Lord Jesus. The word of God says, now are we the sons of God. Whew. When you come to take communion, you got to remember who you are. If you really know who you are, you won't be so quick to fall into the devil's traps and try to make you think that you're too filthy to take communion. I wish somebody had explained it to me because I didn't get it. I was newly saved, and things I did, I thought that meant I wasn't saved no more. And so I would go back and get saved all over again. And that's how, well, I thank God it happened because I needed it for my understanding. That's how Mother Irving got me hmm, to confess that I wasn't saved because I didn't know I could just go and say, God, I'm sorry. I don't want to be like that. Please forgive me and go ahead and take communion, meaning it from my heart, not just trying to pull the wool over God, but in my heart, God, I'm really sorry and I really want to be yours. But because I didn't understand that, I thought I wasn't saving. Therefore, I couldn't take communion. And so the devil tricked me. I didn't take communion. Huh. But that Sunday night, the Lord saved me. Even against my protest. But he saved me. When I said, Lord, don't save me. I love you, but don't save me. Because I backslide. And I won't, be a good I won't be a good example of what it means to be saved. I'll be a hypocrite. And I'd rather, mm, I didn't understand. I'd rather go to hell than be a hypocrite. I know her, father, her husband's uncle said, do you know what happens? I said, yes, sir. It means I have to go to hell. If I don't get saved, I'm going to hell. But in my foolish thinking, I may be in hell, but this would be one little sister in hell loving you, Jesus. I love you even if I have to love you from hell. That's how much I love you. I didn't understand. But when the word of God and the man of God prayed and broke, and I broke the chains of Satan off of me, I've been saved since 1966. Ain't always been perfect, but I've always been saved. And when I find myself wrong, God forgive me. Thank you for your resurrection power. Thank you for reconciling me. He bring me back again and I'll stand up and say I'm saved all over again. Because he sees me through the eyes of his son. There are things he told me to do I didn't do. There are things he told me not to do I did. But I come back and say, God, I messed up, and I'm sorry. I don't want to mess up like that anymore. I don't ever want to do that again. Help me, Lord. So I spend time. He said, I, I spend time in his word. And I tell y'all over and over and over again, you got to spend time in the word. There has to be a daily thing. And I don't do it as a religious practice, just reading the Bible to read the Bible. I do it because that's my time to talk to him. 
I like talking to him, and I like to hear him talk to me. And when he talks to me, sometimes I got to write it down and say, Lord, what does that mean? And sometimes I come back to it later. And that's why I tell you all over and over again, I put the word of God in my heart. I'm not trying to boost Beth Ann. I'm trying to give you an example of what is possible for you. You can live holy. You can live righteous before God. You can have the word of God hid in your heart so that when you come to this table of the Lord and you take this wine and you take this bread and you say unto you Lord God I thank you for delivering me from sin I thank you for healing my body I thank you for anticipation of the marriage supper of the lamb and I thank you that I'm one with you you're in me and I'm in you and you said if I abide in you here's the Sunday school word if I dwell in you if I stay in you, if I keep the communication open between me and you, and I walk in obedience to what you say in your word, to the best I know how, I want to obey you. If you say it's wrong, I say it's wrong. If you say it's sin, I say it's sin. If you say don't do it, then I say, God, help me, don't do that. If you say don't say it, then shut my mouth, I don't want to say it. Walking in obedience with God, that's what I come for when I come to take communion. Communion past, communion future, communion present. Let's stand. I pray today we come in to take communion. I pray in the name of Jesus that none of you ever take communion like you used to. You come to take communion today. You take communion as a child of God. You take communion as one in unity with God. You take communion... <laughs> oh, bless his name. Lord, I thank you. When I take up this cup, I take it as your blood. When I take the wafer, I take it as your body. That you were broken for me. I take it in remembrance. It's okay. She's going to fold it up again. Hallelujah. Pastor, you can see. Pastor. Father, come on, y'all. I'm going to pray after you get here.
thank you so much. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this body. <sighs> Father, we stand here and the doctors have diagnosed us <laughs> with certain diseases and ailments. But we take the body of the Lord Jesus. This wafer does not heal us, but our faith is in you, in your word. We remember that your body was broken for us, that all of the stripes that you took, you took for our healing. We believe that. So Father, we confess in the name of Jesus that by your stripes we were healed and now we await the manifestation of our healing believing you will bring it to pass according to your will take eat and as we drink this drink we take it as the blood of the Lord Jesus. We make a declaration, your blood still works. Satan would have us fall into sin, but we declare your blood still works. So whenever we come up against a situation, help us to remember your blood still works. Help us, oh God, to remember your blood still works. Your blood still works. Your blood still works. Your blood still works. Your blood was shed for the remission of our sin. We thank you that by the beautiful things it was impossible for you to lie. We thank you for the blood. For we were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold. But we were redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. So we drink the blood of our redemption in Jesus' name. Now, I, we're going to collect these containers. Don't move. In anticipation, when we get ready to do this, Sister Jocelyn, you got a mic back there. When we get ready to go to our seat, we're going to sing a blood song. Something. I don't know. Older blood. The blood still works. Okay. They want the blood still works. Put your hands together. Let's sing the blood still works. And praise God in anticipation when we get to drink the blue
taking medication and seemed like nothing was helping and I went I listened to my brother <laughs> you know as nurses we don't like to go to the doctors <laughs> and we, I was listening to my brother and my husband and said go to the doctor and see what's going on but before I went to the doctor I prayed I said God you are able to do exceeding abundantly above all that I can ask or think and this vertigo, you can take it away, God. And I believe that you're going to do that for me. I had vertigo several years ago. And I couldn't even lift my head off of the pillow. That's how bad it was. This time it wasn't so that, that severe. So I started, I started worrying. Not, well, maybe the worrying is not the word. But I started thinking about it. I said, this is a different symptom. This is not the same as I had before. So I went, the doctor did some examination and all. And he said, Miss Cruz, I can't find anything neurologically, which means in my nerves, nothing they could find wrong. He said, but I want you to take a CAT scan, an MRI. Because given your age, and I don't know what that meant, given my age. But he said, given your age, I, and you've never had one. I think you should have an MRI. And I went and I took the MRI. I was scared to death. Lord Jesus, they had to get me together because I have a little bit of claustrophobia. <laughs> and I had to get myself together and start praying. He did some things. And I went through the MRI. And you guess what, y'all? What nothing wrong with my brain. Not a thing. They saw a little something. They said, it looks like I said, what could that come from? He said, you could have had some trauma there. And just that week, I had bumped my head so hard, I thought I was going to pass out. So I, I attributed it. But I'm, I know God is able. The blood will work for your healing. It will work for your healing. Whatever the situation, if we could get in our minds, if we could understand and believe that God is on our side and whatever we're going through, right there for us and he is willing to heal us not just that he can heal us he's willing to heal us the blood still works I thank God 
And you know what? The doctor gave me some exercises, and I wasn't doing them because that's just, you know, that's how I do. But I went on and did the exercises. I have no more vertigo. No more. The blood still works. I'm not giving that credit to the doctor. I'm not giving that credit to the doctor. I'm giving it to the doctor of the doctors. I'm giving it to the supreme doctor. He knows what to do. And he knows how to heal us. He knows what we need to do to be whole and be healed. Just, just follow his direction. Follow God's direction. And you will see him work in your lives. Amen. 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 We're going to take our offering right now. We're going to take our offering. Let us stand. Malachi 3 8. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? And tithes and offerings. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. If there be among you a poor man of one of thy brethren within any of thy gates in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not harden your heart, nor shut thine hand from thy poor brother. Blessed is he that considereth the poor, the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessings of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. Of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Lord, as we come today to give our tithes and offerings, we give freely because you gave your son freely. Yes, we give freely and not grudgingly. We give out of a bountiful heart, not of necessity, because, Lord, you love a cheerful giver. As we give, we believe you supply all our needs according to your riches and glory. Thank you, Lord, for the ability to give and to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. Follow the directions of the usher.
of the Faith Tabernacle Holiness Church. We thank you so much as you continue to give for, our, for the different events and the different projects that are going on at our church. We praise you because we thank God that you're being so consistent and so willing and so generous. So thank you so much. We give you kudos for that. Thank you. Thank you so much for doing that for us. You can give electronically, dollar sign, Faith Tabernacle PA. That's our cash app handle, dollar sign, Faith Tabernacle PA. You can also give on our website, fthcphilly.com, fthcphilly.com. Thank you. And we do ask that you continue to be with us in our services. We are having, uh, our, for, because we are in renovation right now, our Sunday school is at 10 o'clock and then regular 10, 10 to 11 and then the regular service is at 12. There is no continental breakfast for right now, so please just make sure you pay attention to that if you want to be here with us on Sunday school. Wednesdays, we're still in service. We're in-house. We ask that you be with us as we're here 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. Please make sure that you join us. We want you here. We want to be a part as a group, as a community, praising and lifting up the Lord. I invite you also to be with me when I do YouTube services on ministry. Um, my YouTube channel, at Deborah E. Johnson, D-E-B-R-A, E. Johnson. I am telling of the goodness of God. Join me over there as I talk about God's goodness. You don't have any reason not to be with us as we're talking about what God has done for us. You can also be with us on our website, fthcfully.com. There are events that are put there. There's a devotion. The new monthly devotion has been placed up there for April. Amen. You can put a prayer in there if you need to, as well as you can also give your offerings. We thank you so much for all that you are doing in terms of being, being a part of the community. We want you in the community. We want you to stay in the community. So please, listen out for the different events that are happening. Because we don't want you to say, oh, I, oops, I'm sorry, I missed it. Be with us. Make sure that you remember that the services now are only on YouTube and on our website. So I assume most of you realize that and aren't going to Facebook, but just in case, this is a friendly reminder. The services are now being on YouTube, streamed on YouTube and on our website, fthcphilly.com. Please make sure that if you are um, taking a part of the food share that we have, that you make sure you sign the paperwork. We want to make sure that the paperwork is taken care of according to our brother Bill Coleman's standards so that he can take it and pass it on to the people in the appropriate manner. Do not forget, do not forget, we are going to be having Vacation Bible School. We will be having a fundraiser for that. Please listen out for that. And remember that Vacation Bible School will be July 8th through the 13th. The 8th through the 12th is the actual classes. And then on the 13th, the the community, we are going together as a community to Clementon Park. The tickets are $35 for adults and $30 for children 12 and under. So get your money together because you know you want to go. And we want to be there as a community supporting one another and having a day of fun. God does allow us to have fun, right? Laughter, do it good like a medicine. So be there. Make sure you're a part of the event with us. We praise God so much for you watching out and thinking about us as you do. Leave stuff in the chat for us so we can know that you're in the community. We certainly want to make sure that you're in the family with us. And as I always ask, make sure that you pray for the Faith Tabernacle family. We have every age and stage here, so we need you to be praying. We want you to pray for the, the babies. We want you to pray for the middle age. We want you to pray for the seniors. Certainly our senior pastor, Furby, and elder statesman, brother Furby, our pastor, Ron, and his wife, Lady Di. Please make sure that you're praying for the saints of God because we all need your prayers. Everybody needs Jesus every day. Amen. We do want to ask, um, just put out a special prayer, and I believe an agreement about the whole event tomorrow. I'm not quite sure all of that's going to go on, but just pray for the safety of America. Pray that we're doing what's right in God's sight. Pray that it's not just an event and we're woo, but we're doing and asking God what we should be doing and that God will keep us safe in the midst of it. Amen? Amen. You remember that this is the Faith Tabernacle Holiness Church. And what do we do here? We're living like Christ, loving like Christ, and caring like Christ. Make sure that you're a part of that with us. We don't want to leave anyone out that wants to be a part of this community, this Faith Tabernacle family. Make sure that you want to be here with us. We want you here with us. Just for the in-house family, we do remember there's a business meeting, amen, directly after morning service. So please make sure that you're paying attention. And if, for those of you on live stream, you come back and be with us again. Don't miss out because there's going to be something here that you're going to want to hear, that you're going to want to know. We want you to be here while it's happening. Remember, we love you here at Faith Tabernacle. We want you to come back. And you have a great Sunday. Praise his name. Amen.